I'm Robin Murphy with the Center for Robot Assisted Search and Rescue. Welcome to the Disasters and Donuts podcast, where you can learn about disaster robotics and the time it takes to have a cup of coffee and savor a donut. In this episode, we'll discuss how to match a small unmanned aerial system to a mission, and we'll give you the recall from D mnemonic. Since 2001, Kraser has deployed 29 major disasters in five countries, and with half of those as unmanned aerial system deployments. And what we've learned is that natural and man-made disasters range in size, operating conditions, and types of missions. And so that means, how do you pick a small unmanned system platform for a mission for a particular disaster? Well, let's go over the factors in making such a decision. One of the first things you want to consider is the information because, well, first off, the small unmanned aerial system has to be able to provide the right data. I mean, after all, the purpose of flying is to give the responders information, not post tales of great deeds to social media. So, what products, what data products are needed for the mission? Is it streaming? Will the expert be embedded and directed the flight? Will there need to be special payloads or software? Information. Constraints. Are there any constraints? FAA regulations. Is there an airspace uh, that you're in? What's the, is there a TFR? Are there waivers required? Are there any physics? physical, geographical constraints? Do you need to be waterproof? Or, uh, do you need to be able to decon the, the bird if you're flying for a hazmat situation? What are your constraints? Environment. Where is the small UAS flying? Is it indoors, outdoors? What does that takeoff and landing zone look like? Will there be GPS or magnetic interference? Will you be next to a building or, as we learned at the Kilauea volcano, next to a geothermal power plant? Uh, will there be rain, fog, again, daylight, nighttime, environment? Environment's important consideration. Operators. What are the pilot skills you need for that platform for that mission? Uh, what are the visual observer skills? I mean, if you're flying at night, you definitely want to have a visual observer who can work with you as, as the pilot. Um, do you need to embed experts? Operators, will they need personal protective equipment? What about fatigue? What about sleep cycles? And then as we think about fatigue, sleep cycles, high operations tempo, what about ease of use, especially given that everyone will be fatigued? Uh, do you need to take other people, like social workers, or as we call some, sometimes we take bouncers, people who can uh, work with the public, explain what's going on, point them in the right direction, but keep them from nudging the operators and getting and violating that idea of a sterile cockpit. So operators, duration. You know what? Duration, a lot of people ask about, well, how long can the UAV fly? But you know what? Since 2005, since the very first flights, uh, which were at Hurricane Katrina, for any small unmanned aerial system, we have consistently seen that tactical flights average 12 minutes. If you aren't doing photogrammetric mapping, then flights are short. Kind of makes sense, right? Because there's that nature of expertise. You see what you need to see. And since you're doing this for a reason, the op tempo is high. You see what you need to see. And now you just need to go do the next thing. You, you got to get that information out there. You got to go to the next thing. So duration turns out not to be a huge driver in the choice. Risk. People often forget this. What is the cost of the platform? How reliable is it? Uh, for instance, if you're flying over water or lava, uh, a less expensive platform that can do the job is preferred over a platform that's really expensive because if you lose it, you will lose it. You won't be getting it back. I tell people I'm not going to be wild if I lose a Mavic Pro, but I can pay for that if I have to out of my own pocket. 
I can't cover the cost of an M600 or some of these much more sophisticated, more expensive systems. So risk is important. And then you start thinking about risk when you're flying under structures and very narrow tree canopies. All these things come into play. Logistics. What is the size of the platform? What's its transportability? A big question for us is, can the batteries be recharged in the car off the car inverter, or do we actually have to carry a generator or wait till we get back to, to uh, you know, regular AC power? Uh, can you carry lots of batteries so that you can constantly fly? Uh, can you carry two to three unmanned aerial systems in a car? I love David Merrick says, you know, we say, you know, one is none, you know, two is one. You know, we actually like to have three systems, duplicates, if we're going to be out for a day. You know, we are conducting 10 to 15 missions in the middle of nowhere. You've got to have some redundancy. You've got to have a way to recharge your batteries. Everything will go wrong. So logistics become important. All right, here are the seven factors. Uh, not particularly memorable in any way, so let's look at rearranging them. And sure, we can get, get something useful, I think. Recall from D. Think about risk, environment, constraints, operators, information, logistics, and don't worry about duration. You know, but what's interesting is that usually platforms nowadays have similar environment constraint operator information capabilities. So the deciding factors are usually the risk. You, know, you want to go with the least expensive, most reliable platform. Uh, and logistics, easiest to transport and keep in continuous use. So you're going with the cheapest system to get the job done that has the best logistics, which explains why the DJI Mavic Pro is our workhorse platform. It's inexpensive, you know, at $1,000 versus $30,000 or $70,000. The batteries can be recharged in the car as we drive to the next site. Uh, it's there. The batteries are cheap. We can have lots of them anyway. And it's easy to stuff in a jacket or BDU pants if we need to hike or climb over rubble. So recoil from D. Think about that when you, you pick platforms for a mission. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel and check out our website at Krasar.org for tips on safely and rationally integrating unmanned aerial systems into disasters. And also check out our list of classes and publications.